Hello Year 5. I'm going to give you a quick demonstration on the steps we're doing in class and I'm going to do it as a video because I know it's hard to kind of follow along when you're streaming live. So this is to kind of help you so you can understand the steps of this project. So we're making a map, okay? It's going to be a little outline of a country that you're interested in. I'm going to just demonstrate the United Arab Emirates because it's got a sea border and it's got a land border. So I'm going to use this one to demonstrate how you would do the differentiation between sea and land. So normally I would get you to trace this, but I'm going to quickly freehand uh, for the sake of uh, this video. I'm going to quickly freehand a rough kind of outline of what the UAE looks like and it's got a straight land border here and it's got a straight land border here and then this is coastline okay so that's uh, United Arab Emirates and it's got a land border that comes down here and it's got a land border that kind of juts out here this is Qatar it pops out over here okay so this area up here is going to be C. I'm just going to make this trade off. This area here is land and this is your country. So when you are painting your country, do it in shades of green, okay? So I'm mixing up some green. I'm going to put it in my lid and I'm going to water it down a little bit. Okay. There we go. And I'm going to just fill in my country. Now, the children in class have been given something called mod rock, okay, uh, for building up their land. You can do that if you want, or you can build it up using tissue paper, or if you've got Play-Doh or air dry clay, or you can just do what I'm doing now, which is to paint it. Paint the outline without any kind of 3D effect, but that's up to you. Okay, so there's the United Arab Emirates in green. Now, this is how we're going to differentiate between um, adjoining countries. We're going to do this area yellow, okay? It's, well, it's got a lot of desert in that area, so it actually might be yellow, but whether it's desert or not, if your country has um, a land border, you are going to be making it yellow. Now, you can hopefully see what I'm doing here. I'm, I'm diluting some of my color so that I've got a stronger kind of outline around the edge. And I'm fading it in by adding water. And it just makes a nice tonal gradient. It makes it look a bit more dynamic than just having bright, bold yellow for the entire land border. Okay, so here's my land border. Now, ideally, you would let your paint dry or you would at least dab it with a tissue because as hopefully you've realized with watercolor, um, water molecules like to join together, okay? They are attracted to each other. So if you put a different color watercolor next to a wet watercolor, they will join hands. They want to be friends, okay? So they will start bleeding into each other. So the best thing to do is use a tissue to dry an area before you start painting. Now I'm uh, quite good at avoiding cross-contamination with my paint only because I've been painting for a long time. But really, what I should have done, in fact, let me get a tissue now. What I should have done, and what you ought to do at home, is make sure you dry your edges that are going to possibly come into contact with your yellow. Okay? When you dry, this is another thing I think you've learned already. When you dry something, it will take some of the pigment out. So if you want to keep it looking vibrant, you need to just either dry it with a hairdryer or leave it to dry naturally. 
Um, if you haven't got a hair dryer or you haven't got time to wait for it to dry naturally, then dab it with a tissue. But like I say, be prepared. It may uh, take some of the pigment out. So there we go. I've done my land, my country, United Arab Emirates. I've done the land border around it in yellow. Um, you can see that I've tried to vary the yellow by using more pigmented and less pigmented areas. I purely did that by adding more water. It's simple chemistry. More water makes it more dilute. Less water makes it stronger, more pigmented. Okay, now I'm going to do my C. My C is here. Okay, this is the Persian Gulf. If I touch my blue off any of these yellow areas, my C is going to start turning green and I don't want green C. So I'm going to either wait for it to dry, which I haven't got time, dry it with a hairdryer, which I'm not going to do, or dry it with the tissue. So you'll see it will take some of the pigment out. Okay, so look, there we go. So it's gone a little bit lighter. I mean, you might quite like that effect. I'm doing it just to speed things up a bit so taking out some of this pigment around the edge so I don't turn my C green okay there we go now I'm gonna do the same technique with the C as I've done with the land I want to have um, differentiation in the tone it just looks nicer to the human eye when we see uh, areas that are darker and lighter okay so we don't have one color the whole way through so what I'm going to do is I'm going to make my C dark around the coast so here's what I'm calling the coastline now here's the trick before this dries I need to start blending it out otherwise I'll get, in fact, I'm almost getting it now. You'll get kind of a shadow that will never disappear of where your last brush stroke ended if you don't blend it while it's still a little bit wet. Okay, so you've got to add water and blend it out to the edges. It's kind of satisfying. So look, I'm not using any more paint. I'm literally creating this effect with water. Okay, and then I'm going to come around the corner of the coast. Here we go. Now, you'll take your time with this. I'm kind of doing this probably faster than I should, just so I can get the demonstration ready for you. So, I've got to add my water before it dries. Look, see, I'm almost, it's almost leaving a line. You don't, we want to try and avoid that line. We want to try and make it look like a bit more natural, like it flows out in this direction. Okay. Same here. Okay, and water, blend it out. Can you see, I'm not doing my entire coastline and then adding water. I'm doing about, let's say, I don't know, five or six centimeters of coastline and then blending it out. Otherwise, it will dry, it will leave a mark that you can't ever blend away. And it's kind of less satisfying to look at. You want something that when you look at it, you can't see the obvious brush strokes. You want to be able to kind of see the tonal gradient of it kind of um, ebbing away from the edge of the land. Okay, so let's do this bit here. Okay, now obviously, I'm like I said, I'm doing mine really quickly. This should take you probably, I'm going to say, the majority of an art session okay so you will take much uh, more care of yours now a couple of artistic tips you might want to do when you get to this stage if you've got any salt at home if you sprinkle salt on the ocean and um, it can have kind of a cool effect if your paint is still wet I'm gonna dash and grab some salt quickly and we can see if it makes that effect on here with my salts I'm gonna take a little pinch I've just got it in a bag but you probably maybe have some in an actual salt container and I'm just going to sprinkle it 
on here. Now, depending on the type of paper you've used and how long you've waited to add the salt, it can make a really cool effect. However, if your paint's dry already, it, it won't have an impact. So if you're gonna do the salt technique, have the salt nearby before your paint dries. Okay, I'm gonna leave this as it is. The next step is gonna be collaging elements of that country's culture, like uh, landmarks that it's famous for, cuisine that it's famous for, the country's flag perhaps, maybe national dress, emblems, things that symbolize your chosen country. You're going to be doing them on a separate piece of paper. You're going to be do, doing them with watercolour, letting them dry and then outlining them with pen. I will give full details of that in another separate video, but for now, this is your step for this week, okay? All right then, bye-bye.